Pentecost. <laughs> to those present, those reading the service at home that was delivered to them, and those joining us online later. May this church be a space where each one of us feels safe and respected, a part of God's family. God created and cherishes our diversity in age, in gender, in sexual orientation, in body build, health, and history. As we pray, work, sing, lament, and celebrate, we do so as equal members of God's beloved kingdom. May this time be a sacred hour of community with God and with one another. We turn our attention to the announcements for this very busy little place. We pray today for St. Andrew's United Church in St. Andrew, in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, which was my home church as a young person, uh, for, and also for Burke's Falls United Church in Burke's Falls. We have cake and drinks, refreshments downstairs after the service today, so we hope you can all join us. Uh, camping, this is on our hearts and minds uh, as we consider Camp McDougall, and there's a new family camp. So we hope that you uh, check out the website and perhaps you will go uh, between July 23rd and 28th with your family or take another family with you. And what's really exciting about that week is that our own Fame Moffitt is the chaplain and will be bringing her musical talents with her. Uh, we have uh, May 30th, we have Zoom Bible study, of course, from 10 to 11.30 and Stitch Corner in the afternoon. As well, on the 31st, on Wednesday, uh, you'll see on your email there is a, a, a link to the Sudbury Partnerships meeting at 6.30. And then, uh, next week and beyond, we've got June 4th is Pride Sunday at Trinity. It's a chance to model Jesus' in inclusive love to a community that is experiencing much hatred these days, if you have been paying attention to the news June 6th, 9.30, it's a Bible study mini worship, and Reverend uh, Dr. Susan McAlpine Gillis from Atlantic School of Theology, where I go to school, she's coming uh, to, uh, to do some visiting and check out this place of worship where her student uh, is, is doing some work. So uh, we are so excited that you come from, uh, that you, you come whether you're worship team or Bible study or um, it doesn't matter, but just come and join us that morning. And then of course on June 9th to the 11th is the Festival of Faith in North Bay. And also uh, we, we prayfully reflect on the contributions that the Asian, Asian Canadians in this country have provided to Canadian society as it is Asian History Month. Uh, at this time, I would encourage folks to turn your cell phones off, or at least on uh, silent, so that uh, we can all uh, experience uninterrupted worship time. And as well, um, we've got, at the very end of the service, uh, we've got an opportunity for you to click uh, a few pictures at the front. So right after the service, there is, there is an opportunity for photo op with, with the confirmands. Uh, one, one confirmand who's not here today, unfortunately, uh, Evie um, suffered a, an injury on the weekend and will not be able to be with us, but we really hope that come this fall, there is a time and a place where we will do this celebrating again, where we will be able to witness and experience her confirmation. We're also going to take a very quick video for Eddie mm -hmm. at the very end as well. Just uh, some high fives and uh, some get well soons. There is also uh, checking in your email as the last message. Check in your email uh, this week about a new young adult church that's happening in Sudbury and it will continue uh, over June, that announcement. We now turn to hear the acknowledgement of territory. We gather for worship on a land where indigenous people have lived for thousands of years. The church is located on the traditional territory of the Wanapate Anishinaabe. We 
um, and the, the damage the Euro European colonization has had on First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities. And we acknowledge that many Indigenous people see today with in, live with intergeneration trauma, racism, and equality. All who live in this area are, are parties to the Robert Huron Treaty, which outlines and share rights and responsibilities to be connected to the care and use of land. As a covenant people are <laughs> called to honor promises, um, as a church, we have been called to a journey of learning, reconciliation, and prayer. We are called to love our neighbors, may God support us, and bless our commitment. We light this candle as a symbol of the presence of Christ. Known to us through the stories we share, experienced by us through the gathered community, and present to us through the spirit that is in our midst. Please join me in our call to worship. The disciples waited. And so did the Spirit. The disciples moved. And so did the Spirit. The disciples spoke. And so did the Spirit. Together, the disciples and the Spirit met and lived. Together, the disciples and the Spirit shared and witnessed. Together, the disciples and Spirit birthed the church. The body of Christ and Spirit shared the Spirit. As the body in communion, all together.
Thank you for the gift of the Spirit, for the power and energy the Spirit brings, and for the knowledge that we are not alone. Nevertheless, sometimes we find it hard to believe in things we cannot see or touch. The times we have ignored the Spirit's prompting. The times we have not acknowledged the Spirit's work around us. The times we have resisted the Spirit's transforming power. We remember and we are sorry. Pour out your Spirit in you. Flow through us and ignite us once more. Amen. So here's the good news. Our God is always making all things new. Our shortcomings are forgotten, and we can begin again <coughs> with God's Spirit as our helper. And thanks be to God. Amen. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Uh, folks, uh, when I come up for a time with all for all ages, and the, the waffle squares are here, so it's uh, it's springtime. Yes, well, it sure doesn't feel like spring. Actually, yesterday and the rest of this week, it is weird. We are we are in the middle of summer. That's what it's going to feel like. What I'm thinking about is is home. I'm thinking about all those animals out there. And I'm thinking about where do animals call home? Ah. They live in the nature, but if you cut down all their nature, then they won't have a home. Okay, so is there a specific animal you're thinking about? What? Cheetah. A cheetah. Where does a cheetah live? Where's their home? In the jungle. In the jungle, that's right, yeah. What about, what about in, in Africa? That's right, Joe. Thank you for completing that. Allison. I have a bumblebee nest underneath a tire in my backyard. Under a tire? Yeah. A bumblebee nest under a tire. Um, there is something to be said for where bumblebees and hornets make their nests each year. And it some, has something to do with perhaps what our next winter might look like. It's a big possibility. Where else do animals make their... Where are bumblebee nests? I have a little Yes. Across the street from me, many, many times a day, goes from one side of the street to the other. And that's all he does all the day. And I have no idea. You don't know where his home is. So Charlotte has a chipmunk that runs across the street from one side to the other. Anybody have any other? That's right. That chippy is living its best life. Anybody else? Where do some animals live? Maybe just in the wintertime, where do they live? Abby? Um, sometimes bees also live in trees. Yes, in, in uh, a tree to make their beehive. To make their beehive, that's right. Where do, they, where do bears make their homes? In a forest. In a forest? In Africa. Well, well, maybe. There was How one in my backyard yesterday, so he didn't get it from Africa. Oh, so well. there, yeah. Laura, where was that? Where do you think that bear spent its home, its winter home? In a cave. In a cave, yeah. In a den. In a a den. den. Yes. The den is the word. Yes, Joe. Den is the is the word that we use. Um, fox and wolves, they have dens. Well, that got me thinking about when I went to. Oh, something's in Pastor Pam's bag today that I just have to show you. <laughs> Um, I was at Toyota a couple weeks ago getting my oil changed and what they do is they do they change the cabin filter and the cabin filter is usually behind the the um, glove compartment the glove box and they charge you a fortune you can get it yourself do it yourself at Maslach anyway so that's what I usually do but they came to me while I was in the waiting room and they said oh Mrs. Brown you've got a problem you've got a problem with your with your cabin filter, because it, it, for some of you at the back, yeah, it's on the screen. It looks like this, 
And apparently, a small animal made a hole in my cabin filter. I guess every time you put on the heater, and you drove around, it would, it would warm up, sure. And, and then with all of the extra stuffing, etc., cetera, um, it stayed warm. So a chipmunk, or what else, other kind of little animal might have lived there? So the winter Joe. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I can't even, Joe said rat and I can't even I can't. <laughs> Absolutely. Joe, I, mice are the sweetest little things, especially the deer mice with the great big ears. Yeah. That's, I know, but I, we're, not, we're not talking about, you know what? The rat was, would have been way too big for this, and I, no, I can't even think of it. A bunch of tiny mutt rats. No, absolutely. <laughs> You're right. I think a, a mouse or, or a chipmunk made their home in here. And then we were doing our spring cleaning, my husband James and I, and we have Christmas lights that are still hanging up. And we decided last fall that we would just leave our ladder leaning against the back of our house. So we easily went to get the ladder to take down the lights, but we discovered Oh, no. At the top of the ladder was a nest. A nest, and inside the nest was bunch of rats. <laughs> eggs. Any specific kind of eggs? Blue eggs. Blue eggs. What kind of eggs? Robin. Robin's eggs. Three little robin's eggs are in that nest right now, and every time we go out the back door, we startle mom and dad, and they get anxious because they're guarding and they're waiting for these eggs to hatch and keeping them warm. So we've been going out the front door. Uh, so not to disturb. All that to say is animals find their homes and sometimes they're temporary places and sometimes they're for long term, but it's home and it's safe and it's warm and it's theirs. Those are rat eggs. No, yeah. And where, and where do we find our homes? In, on our, on, in our streets, we know that we live in homes, right? Those are our homes. They're houses. They're, They're houses, houses, yes. They're, they don't, we don't live in the jungle. No, we don't. But we have the 19th, the there used to be no houses. That's right. But we find our home. We find our homes on the streets that we live in, on our addresses. The Canadians started building houses. Yes, they did. In the 20s. Oh, okay. Or even before. So, what I'm getting at, where we're going with this today is, there's something very special about today. There's something very special about today. The reason why we're wearing red, it's Pentecost Sunday. And the story is that God is also Holy Spirit. And God found God's home inside of each and every one of us. Safe, close, wow. So that we're never alone. The Holy Spirit is inside of us, has found a home inside of us. Thank you for listening. We're going to hear more about that because you're going to hear about Usually we read a scripture right out of the Bible, but we're going to sing the scripture today. And then I'm going to tell the story of, of the scripture story of Pentecost. Before we get to these, the scripture, what many of, of you are here today to, to witness, and what we're all here very excited to see and be a part of, is confirmation. Maybe move in a little bit closer. So Laura is standing with, uh, Laura is uh, Alex's mentor, and Christina is Haley's mentor, and Babe is Matt's mentor. The church as a community of people with varied gifts, 
united by the Holy Spirit. We gather to celebrate God's presence, to discern God's truth, and to follow the way of Jesus. By our baptism, we are made members of Christ's church. We exercise this membership in the denomination to which we belong, which is for us the United Church of Canada, and within our local community of faith. On behalf of Trinity United Church Capriol Community of Faith, I present the following people whom we welcome into the membership of this community faith. Haley, Roberta, Carla, Bertrand. Matthew, Larry, Boggs, Negan. And Alexander, Nathan, Joseph, LaRose. Haley, Matthew, Alex. <coughs> Do you profess your faith in God, your gracious creator, in Jesus Christ, your friend and savior, and in the Holy Spirit, your teacher and guide? If so, Say, I do. I do. Is it your desire to join with God's people in the United <coughs> Church of Canada as together we seek to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil? If so, say, it is by the grace of God. Will you joyfully and generously enter into the life and work of this community of faith, supporting it with your gifts and sharing its mission? If so, say, I will, God being my helper. I will, God being my helper. As the mentors of these candidates, do you pledge your ongoing support and encouragement to them? If so, Say, I do by the grace of God. I do by the grace of God. And the community of faith, dear friends in Christ, let us pledge to these new members our support and care. And the words are on the screen, and we'll say them together. As you said, in Christ, Christ, we rejoice in the gifts you bring to us. We pledge to you our love and our support. With God's help, we will together live out the mission and ministry of our Christ Church. And we affirm those words. We're not finished yet. We affirm these words by singing the new creed. And our mentors, uh, well, uh, certainly our our confirmants and uh, Christina in her leadership and mine know the actions to the words. So we're going to turn and face the congregation and we'll be able to sing together and use our actions. Confirm, O oh God, 
your beloved child, Haley, by your Holy Spirit, that she may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ all her life. Confirm, O oh God, your beloved child, Matt, by your Holy Spirit, that he may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ all of his life. Amen. <laughs> Confirm, O oh God, your be beloved child, by your Holy Spirit, that he may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ all his life. And Allison has some Bibles for you. Once you receive your Bible, you just turn around. Haley, I present this on behalf of the Trinity United Church Community of Faith. Welcome. Just, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Matthew, <laughs> I present this on behalf of the Trinity of the Church Community Association. And Alex, I present this on behalf of Trinity and I, the Community of Faith. We can uh, move close together with your mentors. On behalf of the community of faith, I present Haley, Matt, and Alex, who seek to renew the faith that was already proclaimed at their baptisms. The grace of Christ attends you, the love of God surrounds you, and the Holy Spirit keep you. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, compromands. You can go and have a seat back on the, on the pew. While these compromands are sitting here, a few weeks ago, over the last few weeks, the communities of this faith, the community of this faith has been grabbing string as they come into church, and they have been tying knots, tying knots in the strings. And each knot represents a prayer for each one of you. So we, we sang this very song at Sparrow Lake, uh, and we did some praying with each other. And now we're going to weave together these folks. So I want you to hold on to these tight. Maybe pull those strings through your fingers while we sing the chorus of weave and feel those prayers from this place.
and to listen for new and exciting ways to be in the world. God's generous spirit knows no bounds. Wouldn't it be amazing if our gifts flowed so boundlessly that people thought we were out of our minds? What new beginnings could that kind of generosity bring about? Let's find out. Let's pray. God of dreams and visions, you call us to be justice seekers. You inspire us to envision a world filled with peace and compassion. May these offerings become a remedy of healing in times of trouble and spark change in times when we need to move. Fill us with your spirit. Amen. Strange and wonderful 
in the air that day. Peter and the others, they were gathered together when all of a sudden it happened. Out of that strange still air, a breeze started to blow. It was quiet and almost ticklish at first. Then, that little breeze got stronger and stronger until it rattled the shutters on the windows. It whirled and twirled between the followers of Jesus in that room and all around them. Faster and stronger the wind blew until it made their hearts beat as fast as the wings of a dove. That wind moved so fast that people felt as if flames were dancing on their foreheads. When all of the travelers saw what was going on, they were, ast they were astonished. The followers of Jesus started speaking to them, but it was as if that wondrous wind made them able to understand one another. And the wind, well, it continued to wrap around them, whirling and twirling between them. Some of the travelers actually thought that, that these followers of Jesus were drunk or crazy. Then <laughs> Peter, standing with the followers and friends of Jesus, said in a loud voice, listen. <coughs> and everyone became quiet. Their eyes shone, and they smiled. Remember what the prophet Joel said? He said, I will pour out my spirit upon you all. Your daughters and sons will have words from me, from God, to you. Old and young will dream great dreams. Peter's words, the words from God, whirled and twirled among the people, bringing them the fiery love of God. Wow. Peter told them about Jesus and the promise of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people joined the following of Jesus that very day. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We know this service is long, so my words will be short. <laughs> short <Shorter. laughs> As much as you think this sermon is for everybody, and it is, it is especially for you, confirmands, especially for you. Our confirmation began. It was a journey starting in January, and we met each month in the Sudbury area. Our program uh, considered all the words that we speak in the United Church Creed. These words are for our confirmants. The Creed, after all, is a confession of faith. They are words threaded together to shape what we believe. It was an exercise that took time and it allowed room for questions to bake and to form, thoughts to percolate. And each would provide their own perspectives and they would debate as well. Each would even change their own minds on different topics. The final leg of the program, we attended Sparrow Lake. United Church Camp, where confirmants and leaders met up with groups from Southern Ontario. And although 
we were there to further explore the creed, it was interesting to observe the unique weaving of individuals' thoughts and ideas. Some had similar perspectives and others challenged and pressed back again about statements that they struggled with. But isn't that what confirmation is all about? Isn't that what faith is all about? That we can perhaps picture even those disciples that day. Jesus is gone and they were looking at each other wondering, okay, what next? <laughs> what next? And then it happened. With the swirling wind, the disciples were reminded that they wouldn't have to go this alone. And that the promise from God, that the Holy Spirit would come and live in each of them, making a home within each of them, their hearts were set ablaze, just as the Holy Spirit makes their home in us. We are reminded again and again, each time we say the first words of the creed, and what are they? We are not alone. What? We are not alone. What? We are not alone. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we are not alone. It is... Is it that simple? Do you think that? Is it that simple? That being filled with the Holy Spirit means that we have it all figured out? That we wouldn't have doubt? That, that our faith wouldn't waver? When stuff gets hard? That we wouldn't lose hope? We're living proof that it is not simple. I spoke of our time at a time of gratitude, that we thank the youth for helping us to open our eyes, to see through a different lens. And I need to share with you how very true that is. I was leading a small group at camp, and I had chosen to explore the part of the creed that says, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. And I proceeded to hang three signs up, and they were spread apart. And one said agreed, and the other said disagreed, and the last one said undecided. And then I asked various questions to the group, including leaders. And they would move from, from one spot to another depending on where they were personally moved by the question that was asked. Their own thoughts, the way they felt. And then I would, I would take the opportunity to ask, so, what is it about your decision that brought you to that? And they would make a comment. One of the rules was that whenever anyone was speaking, they weren't there to change someone else's mind. And it wasn't up for debate, it was theirs to say. They were there to simply proclaim what they believed. And then I asked the question, do you believe that God forgives us? I think I heard Joe. <laughs> Immediately, many scattered right to the agreed side. One or two hovered around the indecided. And one person went and sat at the disagree side. There was a clear lopsidedness of opinion. I'm very curious, I asked the one who disagreed why they had. <laughs> the response made my throat sick and my eyes missed. This young person shared that God has given up on us. <laughs> we have screwed up things so bad and we have done such horrible things to the land and to each other <laughs> that there's no way God would forgive what we've done. God has given up on us. In that moment, <laughs> all I could do was nod and cry and say, oh man, we sure have screwed up, haven't we? We have. This person stood alone and spoke with conviction. 
And as hard as it was to hear, have you not perhaps felt that same way sometimes? Of course now, I needed to, I needed to pull those that were crowded at the agreed sign. I heard why they believed God would be a forgiving God. And their answers gave me hope, despite how we have screwed up and keep screwing up. I heard words of hope, words that can work their way into the crevices of our, our broken and bruised places of our hearts. And to be able to say that God is our judge and our hope. That voice that surfaces at times, that has us thinking the ugliness of the world is just too much for God. And maybe we think we're too much for God. Well, these feelings need our prayers. Every knot, every knot in our weaving, our prayers for you, Alex, Haley, and Matt. They are reminders that this community of faith has you wrapped in their faithful loving arms and will share their stories of hope. Share their stories of hope. And we can't hear to hear, we can't wait to hear your stories of hope. Yeah. The Holy Spirit that blew wildly on that Pentecost day hasn't stopped blowing. It's not a special one day on the calendar. Pentecost is here, it's now. It's now. The Holy Spirit has made a home inside of each of us. It is the common thread that weaves us together. Amen. As we sing our communion hymn, Wisdom Shakers, we'll need compromise back up.
Come if you are old and young, just as you are, each of you, every one of you, has a seat right here at Christ's table. We share these words together. God's Spirit is always with us. God is with us indeed. Lift up your hearts and minds. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It looks like bread. And it is bread. But God is incredibly imaginative. There is a surprise in this bread. For within each crumb, God has folded nothing less, nothing less than heaven. Every culture has bread. Soda bread, pita bread, dumplings, biscuits. And when we break it, and everyone has a piece, what we are doing is saying, we remember. Let's share together the story of Jesus. It looks like juice. The wine of old, and it is wine. Not really, it's grape juice. But God, being God, didn't leave it there. And has squeezed into each drop a promise for the whole world. And when we taste it, it sort of whispers in, in, a, in the whole world. And when we taste it, and it sort of dances with our memories, telling us, God loves you. God loves me. God loves us completely. And so we sing. One of the disciples, Peter, was telling them how he felt when he stepped out of the boat in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Do you remember that? And wanted to walk towards Jesus over the surface and what it, went, and what it felt like when the water reached his knees and then the middle and his middle and then his neck. Matthew was talking about the time before he was a disciple, sitting in the sun, counting out taxpayers' money, enjoying the chink, chink, chink of the coins. Does anyone recall that story? When a shadow blocked out his son and he lost count, he looked up and the silhouette of Jesus filled his view and asked him to put down the money and follow him. Andrew interrupted Matthew to tell him about the time he found a wee boy with two fish and five barely loaves. We all remember that one. Hardly enough for one meal, and presented the boy and his basket to Jesus in front of a huge crowd of 5,000. He could hear the titter of the front few row at the thought of feeding them all with a 12-year-old packet lunch. But Jesus did. 
and all the other disciples shared their memories of what had happened to them while they were following Jesus, up until the time they encountered Jerusalem, and people waved palms though Jesus sat on a donkey. Then suddenly, Jesus himself interrupted. He interrupted them and he, and he said, here's another story. And he lifted the bread, lying on the table. And he paused as everyone felt silent and listened. And he said, this bread, it's the most important reminder you have of me. This is an image of my body. I break it. <coughs> to show you that like you, my body will break. Like you, I can suffer. I want you all to take a look at this bread, he said, so that you all know what's happening to me. And I want you to do it regularly, reminding yourselves that I am real, reminding yourselves of what I have done for you, because I love you so very much. All the disciples were speechless as Jesus passed the broken bread around. They didn't understand in the same way we don't fully understand when we shy away from speaking about Jesus, Jesus' suffering. Likewise, while the bread was being passed around, Jesus lifted up the cup in midair and he held it there in front of them for a moment while everyone felt silent. This wine, he said, is another reminder of my realness. It's a symbol of my, of my blood that will be spilt when I die. Don't be afraid, he said, because tucked within this is a promise, it's a covenant that I will be always with you wherever you go. I'll never let you go. He said, friends, I love you so much that not even death can separate us. And again, Jesus passed the wine around to all of them, and they took a sip, and none of them understood, just as None of us, with all honesty, can really understand, but we remember. Today we share this very same meal that Jesus did with his friends. And the bread and the cup reminds us of our stories of Jesus. And when, when he did, he did it because of his love that can never die. So we remember as we sing this. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen, is risen. will come again to meet yes. us, and walks with us the way of love. Holy kingdom come. Let us pray. Great God, of all things you've created, we take the simplest food and find you among us as we eat together. It's the great story of Jesus. We hear of your love for us being retold, and we remember all that Jesus has done for us because of that love. Through the Spirit, you set this bread and wine apart to be used as an image of you and your love for us. Bless these gifts with your Holy Spirit. Bless what we are about to do here. For this gift of bread and wine that reminds us of the spiritual gifts you have given us, we give you thanks. We thank you for calling us your children for sharing with us a love more powerful than the universe with every person who has been at this table in every time and every place. We pray for the ill, those who are hurting, awaiting surgery, and those recovering. We pray for the hungry, those caught in the middle of war, for all those who are challenged with mental health burdens in monsoons, in fires, those who are grieving, those who 
whose hearts feel heavy with the pressures of this world. God, we lift our prayers to you now, for you know them before they're even on our tongues. God, hear our prayers. And we now pray the prayer that you taught your disciples so long ago, the ones we say together now. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, bread for your journey. Bread for your journey. Bread for your journey. blood of Christ, our cup of God's blessing. Spirit God, blow open the doors of our closed off hearts. Set our tongues free to proclaim your praise. Open our ears to receive your wisdom. Bless our youth with visions, and our elders with dreams. Bestow our children with gifts of prophecy, and renew the faith of your people throughout the world. Send your spirit upon the world, so that we all may be filled with your life. Flowing into our lives once more. Holy One, and to become, help us find the strength and courage to become the people you call us to be.
From beginning to end, you are surrounded by grace, and God loves you through all of your days. May you leave this place knowing you go with the grace of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit finds its home within you. Amen. Thank you.